Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Leslie from Jolie Lee Creations, and today we are going to be making the Quartz Clutch by SoFlo Designs. It is designed to be made with jelly and clear vinyl, so it has a full back, see-through front, top zipper, and a little wristlet strap. It also comes with a lined version, and so that's what I'm going to be making today. I recently had a little bit of interest in making more with leather. I know my machine is capable of it. So I went to Tandy Leather last week and I got some leather scraps and some pieces to play with. So I got this nice caramel color leather and it's two ounces and I made a purse with it and I didn't need to skive or anything. So I want to give it a go with this little pouch and see if we can do it. So that's what I'm going to do today. It may or may not work. I think it should since I had no problems with the purse. I think it'll be okay for this pouch. So let's give it a try and let's get started. So let's go over the pieces for this pattern. It doesn't require a lot of hardware. We have a D-ring for our wristlet. We have a zipper pull, a zipper, a swivel hook, zipper tab, strap accent, our strap piece and leather, we have our top accent, we have our front bottom, we have our back, and we have our two lining panels. The lining panels I interfaced with a woven soft, and the front panel bottom that I did with um, cotton, I did interface it with a woven firm just so it had a little bit more structure with the leather. I'm going to start working with my strap. We're going to flip it over and draw a line straight down the middle, just like we are doing a normal strap. She does assemble it a little bit different if you're using raw edge materials. So I'm going to follow that way in the pattern um, just for the strap just because I can use the leather accent on the top as well. And I think it was kind of something different. And so I really like that. So we're just running double-sided tape down each side of the line. And we want to keep it at least an eighth inch away from that line so that we're not top stitching through it. I'm going to remove the backing and fold to the center of the line. And again, this strap of this material isn't very thick. So I think we can get away with doing a folded strap. But you certainly can probably, you can certainly get away with leather using a raw edge. So again, just peeling off the tape, pressing it to the middle, leaving a slight gap along that line in the middle just so it's easier to fold onto itself. And now we need another line of double-sided tape just to hold this together. Peel off that backing. And I'm just going to pinch these edges together. In the pattern, she gave us marks to mark on the end of both straps, and we're going to top stitch down the side on each one in between those two lines. So don't go past this line here or here. Okay, so we're going to take our strap accent and our strap connector, and we want to slide our strap connector onto our strap. I'm going to add a couple of pieces of double-sided tape along the long sides of the accent piece. And I did make this accent piece a quarter of an inch wider than the instructions, just because this leather was a little bit thick, and it didn't quite fit around 
the um, strap like I kind of wanted to and I wanted to make sure that it's stitched in place. So just a tad wider. So if you're doing this method with a thick full strap, um, with jelly it's not near as thick, um, but being that this is leather it was. So we're going to line up the raw edge with our line that we drew earlier, which should be at the top of those stitches. So we're going to center that up and fold this around to the back side. And you should have a little gap in between your two pieces. And then we're going to bring the other end of our strap around, line up that raw edge to our line that we drew earlier in the book top of those stitches. So if your stitches were a little bit off, you can fix that now by covering up those stitches with our strap. And there should be a small gap in between your straps here. So it's not going to connect all the way. Now we need to top stitch this accent piece on, starting at one side, going up, across, back down, and over. So we just really want to make sure that this is on here. Good. You can add a couple clips to keep it in place. So now we can pull our hardware up through the strap. So we didn't really like the way the connector sat in that little channel just because it was a little bit thick. So I think I'm just going to do a regular, how I would do a normal strap. Um, with leather. Um, so I think I'm just going to try and do somewhat of a normal strap. So because it's thick, I think I'm, I think I should be able to just slide this on here, bring this end up to the edge of our connector, fold this down, and add a rivet through there. So it'll be a little bit smaller of a strap, but you should still be able to get your hand in there. And so we'll do that. Let's see if I can mark this. That's a pretty nice punch all the way through. Let's see if I can get it out. Use that double sided tape in there so I've got a little bit. I'm just going to center this back up on the back side, punch that all the way through. So now we can line all this back up. The rivet's long enough, it should be. It's pretty long post nine millimeter that I use for just about everything. Nope, and that did not stick. Okay, so let's see, what can we, let me see, I don't think, oh, I may have a longer post. Let me see if I have a 10. Okay, so that's a no for a nine millimeter. And this is a nine by 10. So this should work, hopefully. Long post.
travel with that. Okay, and that held. Perfect. So, 10 millimeter rivets are a must for that thickness. And we have our little strap. Okay, we also need to work with our D ring tab. So, this one should be easier. It shouldn't give us any problems. We're just going to fold this to the center. And then we need to top stitch down both sides. Add our D ring connector and base the bottom closed. Okay, so we can work with our zipper. We need to fold the ends down the 90 degree angle. And I like to use regular pins for this. So I'm going to fold back in half and pinch. And stick a pin in to hold. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side to make sure they're even. Fold and pinch. Add a pin. And then we need to stitch down this side here along the edge of our zipper tape to hold that at a 90 degree angle. Take out your pins. Trim your threads. Put this away before they spill. Trim off any excess zipper on the sides. And let's burn the edges to keep those from fraying. And any little threads. And then now we want to add our zipper pull. So again, I'm going to clean up the edges just so they're not fraying. And I'm going to check to see which tooth is the highest. We have the right one highest. So that one's going to go on first. Slide our zipper pull on the right side. Then the left side. And we want to adjust these teeth looking through here and push down, leading with that tooth on the top. And then everything should line up at the top. If it's not, you can try again and get it until it's right. And then we need to trim our zipper down to the length in the pattern. Now we need to add our zipper tab. And since it's a raw edge leather, I should just be able to fold it over once and top stitch that on. It's going to use a little bit of double sided tape. On each side to keep it in place. and top stitch that on.
trim off any excess. And now we can grab our main body pieces and lining. So I'm going to take the front bottom and the front top and lay them right sides together, lining up the raw edges. And I'm going to stitch that down. that back up towards the top and we need to top stitch that down. It is a bit thick. Let's see if we do that. It should be okay or we could top stitch along both. Let me make it a little bit better. Let's fold this seam open on the back. I think it might be too small of a seam allowance and it's not wanting to go that way. So let's just top stitch along the top. didn't want to go that way so we won't force it and we'll just go the way that it wants to fold naturally and there's a little bit excess on this side so we just want to trim that off. Okay so now we can take our zipper and we want to find the center of our zipper. There's a the little chalk mark there on both sides and find the center of our main body. And line up our zipper going close to the left side. So we're going to put our zipper that way. Line up the raw edges. We'll add a couple clips and we'll base this into place. Oops. Zipper pull out of the way. So we have that piece on. And we need to attach a lining piece. So right sides together, I'm going to open up that zipper, line up the edges, clip in place, Oops. and let's sew that side down to the zipper. Let the zipper pull out of the way. We want to fold back this lining piece or this top piece rather. Let's leave the lining out. Pull everything tight and top stitch along the edge of this zipper here. So I'm pull my zipper out of the way and top stitch here along the edge of this accent panel in my zipper. Okay, now let's fold that back down and let's work with our other side of our zipper. 
and our back panel. So we want to fold this in half to find our center, line up our center mark with the center mark we matched on the zipper earlier, and make sure the sides line up of our other panel. And we want to baste our zipper onto the top edge of this panel. So just stitching from the edge of the zipper along the top edge. Let's add our other lining panel to this top of the zipper. Clip into place and sew that down at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure our zipper's out of the way. Do our zipper pull out of the way. And now we need to flip everything back over easier to start with our zipper close to fold the seam allowance back towards itself and we need to top stitch so our zipper pan or in lining panel is going to the right side so it's just top stitching through our main body panel and our zipper so top stitch along that edge Now we want to bring the bottom of our back piece to the bottom of the top or the front bottom. So we have our accent, our front bottom, and then we have this back panel here. So we're gonna bring that together and line that up. The very bottom there. We'll stitch this together in a quarter of an inch. And now we need to top stitch that seam. So to do that, we're going to make sure our zipper is all the way undone and fold everything back along that bottom seam. And I find it easier to go towards my zipper. So we have everything's inside out here. So these are our lining pieces. I know it's hard to tell because of the front. This is our back and this is our front. So everything is folded back towards our back piece. Keep our lining panels out of the way and we're going to top stitch going towards the back of our zipper. As you get closer to the bottom, you can kind of use your hands to go in between the zipper and hold everything tight. And then carefully pull out without scratching your materials with the needle. So now our bottom should be sewn together. So everything should look like this. Before we forget, we need to add our D-ring connector. And that's going to go on the open zipper side along your accent panel and just line everything up halfway in between. So it should sit right inside your stitches. It's maybe a little thick for me because it is leather, but we'll see. So if using a domestic machine or something thinner, um, thicker material, you may want to do a cotton tab there, but it may be okay. All right, so now we have our pieces together. We want to 
line, let's close our zipper and make it a little bit easier. Line up our accent panel and our back pieces along the side here. So we're going to make sure that these line up. Line those up at least a quarter of an inch in. So we want those to be lined up really well. And add a nice clip there. And do the same for the other side. So line up the edge of the accent panel and the edge of our back panel. And add a clip. And you may need a couple clips there, especially with that D-ring connector. And if you struggle with those shifting on you, you certainly can add double-sided tape right there in that area so it doesn't shift. Now we're going to smooth out the sides to the bottom and add a couple clips keeping everything together there. So I just want everything to crease well. So we'll push everything down, lining up the sides at the bottom, and add a couple clips. The same thing for the lining panel. This side's just a little bit off, but that's okay. Just gonna line it up the best we can. And clip in place. At the bottom, we want to leave a turning gap. So I'm going to go a couple inches in from the sides. And I always like a bigger turning gap, just especially because um, this is leather. So I'm just going to go right about there as I'm stitching around. So I'm just going to clip. Then I'll add a couple clips in here where we're not going to sew. And I'm just going to start at this top edge at a quarter of an inch. We don't need to go across the bottom because it's already folded. So I'm just starting right at that edge. And back stitching well, I'm going quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way up the side. Use a hump jumper just to make sure I can get up over that seam without any problems. Oops, I need a clip. And once I get over this hump, I'm going to go into a 3 8 inch seam allowance to make my lining a little bit tighter. And then we're going to turn the corner. until we get to our line and then just stitch down our line to the bottom edge and back stitch well and that just keeps the stitches from pulling out when we turn the corner. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to come up our little line here, back stitching well. There. Turn the corner, come up the other side. to make sure I can get up the seam okay without any issues. And we're going into a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I want to trim the seam allowance on the lining side. Because the seam allowance is so small on the exterior, 
Um, I don't feel like we really need to trim much of that. And you do want to make sure that you don't trim these back stitches here for your top stitch or that'll come out along the top. So just always be mindful when we're trimming seam allowances off on the exteriors that we don't hit those stitch lines, the back stitch. Okay, so now we can turn it all out through our little hole. Put our zipper all the way. Poke our corners out. This is a little bit tough. I'm going to trim a tiny bit off of these corners here, just to make it a little easier to stick out. There we go. So I'm going to just take this corner with my index finger pushed in through and kind of pinch it and poke that corner right through with my thumb first. And it gives it a little bit easier time to turn out. Let's see, can I be a little tough? So the seams are definitely a little tough with this leather, but I think we can maybe snip a tiny bit here without getting those threads. So let's do that and then grab a lighter. We'll make sure to singe these so they don't fray, just in case. Maybe that side will poke out a little bit better. There we go. So then our sides, we we'll just have to crease this a little bit. Send it this side. Poke this corner out a little bit more. And then we just need to close up our bottom. So it should want to close up naturally. So trim those corners. And with that seam across the bottom, just pull it tight and it should naturally crease. And then we can just close that shut with a small stitch. I really like the stitch length um, of a one on this area, just really tight, small stitches to close that up. Just add the wrist strap and that is it. This is the Quartz Clutch, the lined version with leather. I think it turned out pretty amazing. It's definitely something that I will make again. It's cute little inside, perfect for outings. I even like the little strap a lot. And I think if your machine can handle thicker vinyls, then you can handle a thin leather. So anybody with industrials, give it a shot. Um, this was really fun. Again, it was a two ounce leather and it handled pretty well in my machine. I didn't have any issues at all, even with the thicker strap area. Like I said, I think it's about the equivalent of the thicker vinyls. So let me know in the comments below if you liked this video and you want to see more leather videos. It's something I kind of want to dabble in and just see where it goes. 
So I hope you're along for the ride. And if you learned anything from this video, please make sure to like it on your way out. And if you do make a quartz clutch of your own, please post it in my group, Creating with Joe Lely. I'd love to see it. And you can also tag me on any social media, Joe Lely Creations, and you can tag the designer as well, SoFlo Designs. I know she'd love to see your makes too. Thanks. We'll see you next time.